Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Reading Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Sometimes we don't get why things happen in our lives. Pat's two cents. And listen, when life throws quandaries our way, whether we want to catch them or not, they come to us without invitation. And we wonder why, why, why? I don't get it. What did I do? What's wrong with me? What's going on? And we wonder where God is in the picture. There's a a lyric from a song he is able it says uh, uh, questions seem to haunt us night and day how can God allow my heart to be torn this way does he listen when I call is he even there at all yet I know when my eyes fail to see he is able and even though it seems impossible to me he is able but if he chooses not to move in the way we pray he would, I'm confident he's working all together for my good. And I will stand on his word for he is able. That's hard. That kind of faith can be very difficult when all the wind has been knocked out of your sails. You can barely catch your breath for everything coming at you. But listen, for everything under the heaven, there is a season and there is a reason. So don't think that things are happening haphazardly because God is totally in control. Don't you lose heart. You know, sometimes, I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes when I do this YouTube ministry, I literally cry to God and I said, Lord, I don't have connections like some others do. I don't have the know-how to get my videos out there. This is the gospel. This is more important than what a movie star is doing or who a movie star is sleeping with or, or a, a popular song that just popped up. This is more important because this deals with here and now, throughout eternity. It's very important. And I have to deal. I have to struggle and cry and fight through not giving up on this channel. Now, I'm just being honest with you. It seems like I can go on Facebook. Somebody can show a dog wagging its tail. And I sit right here and look at the numbers going up into the thousands within days. And I and many others on this YouTube are pouring our hearts out, trying to get people to turn to God. And we might get 50 views, 100 views, and it sits there. And the sad part is that people do not hunger for the things of God. They're not interested. They would rather be entertained. 
They would rather have a good laugh, rather hear a good song and a dance. But they are not interested in what's going on in here. It's a dummy down effect, but it can be frustrating. And I know that God is going to do what he's going to do in spite of the lack of interest, in spite of the lack of hunger. But it's really disheartening to do all this work and to get such little interest. I mean, this thing is around the world. It's not like we're just limited to one state or one city. This internet goes around the world. And it is so sad. I can get on Facebook and I can look at how many people have no interest in the things of God. People are putting out things left and right. And unless it's some young, fine man that's talking fast, talking loud, they're not going to get many hits. Unless it's a beautiful young lady, they're not going to get many hits. Because we're given to what we see. We, you know, we're stimulated by what we see. Ooh. And as God says in his word, some of us are just like a form of, a, of entertainment. God sits and listens. I mean, excuse me. People sit and listen. That's what God says. That people sit and listen as if they're listening to a little entertainment, a little song, a little poem. But they're not really taking it to heart. So there's not much hunger, there's not much interest. And I, that is my biggest struggle right now. So I can't complain because I am very blessed in my personal life. But I still have to deal with the disappointments, with the discouragement. And as you see, I'm pushing towards 500 videos. And I'm only doing it because I'm obeying the word of God that says, do not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, there's a season again, you shall reap if you faint not. For me, for those of you who are working YouTube, don't get discouraged. I don't care what they do with the internet. Don't get discouraged because God knows who to make turn on your video at the right time. So don't get discouraged. I'm fighting it myself. I understand. But as you see, I still keep making the videos in spite of how I feel. Now, when you're going through changes and life is kicking you in the tail and you feel like, well, what is the use? I'm, I'm trying to keep my family together. I'm trying to keep the finances. I'm trying to keep my kids from going crazy and running out in the streets and getting caught up in all kind of nonsense with dope, drugs, alcohol, sex, all of that. I'm trying so hard to keep them out of jail. I'm trying, 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 and, and it seems like I'm the only one trying here. But you're not trying alone. God is helping, in spite of the fact you may not know it. I'm going to share something with you that happened when I was young. I was hanging out in the streets and my father was worried about me. And he shared with one of the neighbors. One of those neighbors that he shared with decided to come to the club that I used to hang out at. And he saw me in there shooting pool. And he came over and he said, you know, after you finish your game, can we talk outside? I said, yeah. So I finished and I gave my table up because I, I was winning. We had to tell you that. But anyway, so I went outside. We talked. And he said, you know, he said, um, I know it looks like you're having a ball right now. But you have to remember you have a future. And he just started breaking it down. The vanity of it all. The uselessness of it all. And, um, you know, don't live for the moment. You've got to live for the future, too. And, you know, people are out there talking to your kids. God will designate, assign a person. He will give you a divine appointment where someone will sit and talk to your child that your child will listen to more than you. Excuse me. So understand, you must keep praying 
for your children. My father told me he never hit the pillow without praying for me. When he was saved and when he was unsaved, he always prayed for me on a daily basis. I know from what I've seen out in those streets and the dangers I was able to escape from, I know that man was praying for me. So I'm here to tell you, don't give up on praying for your children. Don't. It could be a matter of life and death. It could be a matter of your child thinking, oh, I can do this and get out of harm's way. They could recognize the danger. They can feel an alarm, go off inside where they know this is not a good thing. Let me go. And they will leave the scenario and be safe because you're praying. And while you're praying, God's working. Even though you feel like you're the only one, you're not. You're not in it alone. God is working on your behalf. And all things will work together for the good. Even if they get a little trouble or they have a little problem or they hit a bump in the road, trust me, as long as you keep praying and as long as you keep sharing with your children, don't give up. Don't be weary and well-doing. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. Don't faint. Whatever you do, don't faint. You hear me? All right. There are some more videos coming. God bless you.